Okay. So we need to talk about the rational roots theorem because that's going to generate a list of potential roots we can try to pull out of a given factor. The rational roots theorem requires you to use two coefficients of the polynomial, the leading coefficient and the constant term. So what you do is you take the factors of the constant term minus 2 I should have done these arrows differently factors of minus 2 and we divide them by the factors of the leading coefficient of 6 so let's list them out the factors of 2 are just 1 and 2 the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, the rational roots theorem states that the only rational roots for this polynomial are going to occur on the following list. And the list is going to be constructed by taking every factor on top and putting it over each factor on the bottom. So, for example, I'm going to do 1 divided by 1 as my first factor, 1 divided by 2 as my second factor, 1 divided by 3 as the third, 1 divided by 6 as the fourth. So now I've exhausted the 1 on top. I've put 1 over each of the four possible denominators. Now I'm going to do the same thing with 2. 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 3, and 2 over 6. Now notice I'm putting plus and minus next to each one of these because it could be that positive one-half is a root, or it could be that minus one-half is a root. But of all the possible fractions that are zeros of g, they have to be one of these, one of the fractions in this list. But you might notice that 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1 over 1. So 2 over 2 is a bit redundant because that's already covered by 1 over 1. And the same thing with 2 over 6 and 1 over 3. So actually our list is a little bit too big because 2 sixths is the same thing as 1 third. So we don't need to test 1 third two different times. Now, this is a difficult problem as to whether or not, you know, this is still a lot to test. And in order to determine whether, you know, which one of these is a root, the brute force way is to simply do synthetic division with each one of these until you determine whether each one of these is a root or not. Um, there's a number of things we can do and we can talk about them in class that are relatively complicated and uh, I don't want to talk about them right now. They're uh, Descartes' rule of signs and finding bounds on zeros, but the easiest thing to do is to use a graphing calculator to kind of eyeball whether these particular x values turn out to be zeros. I'm going to be exploiting the fact that in my version of the textbook, the instructor's version of the textbook, I have all the answers written out for me, so I'm going to be exploiting that like a madman. So, the first thing I'm going to try out is I'm going to try out x equals minus 2. And I know this is going to work because my book tells me it's going to work. So, that's the number on the outside. Doing synthetic division with g, I'm just going to write the coefficients on the inside, you know, to the right of the uh, vertical bar. So that's going to be 6x cubed, 13x squared, 
1 x and minus 2. Now, now here's what I can do. I've got to do synthetic division, so I've got to drop the 6. Dropping the 6, then I multiply by minus 2. Minus 2 times 6 is a minus 12. Adding 13 plus minus 2 is 1. Multiply minus 2 times 1, and I get minus 2. Add 1 and minus 2, I get minus 1. Then I can multiply minus 2 times minus 1 to get plus 2, and minus 2 plus 2 is 0. Once you get 0 here, you know you found a root. Plus, or uh, minus 2, rather, works. Now, we can continue on doing synthetic division with this, but notice here, if this is a cubic, then starting with x cubed, then our quotient is quadratic, plus 1 x minus 1. So that means quadratics we know how to handle. If I can factor this quadratic, I can find the other zeros of this polynomial. Because what we just found, we just found that g of x is equal to x minus a minus 2 it's always x minus this number on the outside times the quotient has no remainder. It's just simply x minus a minus 2 or x plus 2 times this. And that is our g of x. So if we can factor this, we found our other zeros. So let's see, 6 and minus 1. Multiplying those together, I'm going to get minus 6. So 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. I need factors of minus 6 that add to 1. How about 3 and minus 2? Those will add to minus 1 and multiply to minus 6. So we have g of x being x plus 2 times 6x squared plus 3x, reading this in the kind of zigzag fashion, 6x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 1. We're left with x plus 2. Now factoring by grouping, in the first two terms I see 3x in common, and pulling 3x out leaves me with 2x plus 1. And if I want to get 2x plus 1 out of the second two terms, I'm going to have to pull out a minus 1. So that leaves me with x plus 2. In these two terms, I have 2x plus 1 in common. So I'm going to factor that out, and that's going to leave me with 3x minus 1. So we already know this gives us a 0 of x equals minus 2. When we set 2x plus 1 equal to 0, we're going to get 2x is minus 1 which means x is minus one-half. So minus one-half is the other zero. And if we do the same thing for 3x minus one, set that equal to zero, add one to both sides, and then divide by three, we get our final zero as one-third. So 
we found all the zeros, and all the zeros are nice numbers or fractions at the very least. So, those are all of our rational zeros. We could have continued doing synthetic division, but once you hit a quadratic, you don't need to continue on anymore. You can just stop and factor or do quadratic formula, which usually is a great deal easier, if not completely necessary.